of them, uh, what are we doing to measure or to make sure that we meet that expectation, the demand of the customers that have to use our facilities, use our infrastructure, and then come through our airports? One of the things our diagnostic approach revealed was the fact that we need to increase the capacity. The facility capacity must be increased. And the facilities were no longer safe. And so we embarked upon that. And some people will like you to believe it's cosmetics. There's nothing cosmetics about it. There's nothing cosmetics about safety and security. And so essentially what we did was to increase the current facilities we have by 150%. For Lagos, we actually did 200% increase in the facility, some of which are not ready, so you will not see that. Uh, particularly the two arms, the wing E and the wing D. And so we have an expanded holding capacity for our passengers. But not only that, there are back-end infrastructures that have to support the facility itself, most of which you will not see. Uh, for instance, the, the, the trunking that goes with it, the conveyor belt you will see, the, the auxiliary services, you will not see most of them. But all we have to increase by 200%. And so you have a situation where when you come in, your processing time is reduced to less than 15 minutes. And so you don't have to stand on those long queues. You don't have to be harassed as you go because the space has increased. And the, the workers' capacity to be in tandem with the global standard has also improved because we went on massive training to ensure that not just expanding the capacity of your infrastructure, those that will manage, they need the requisite training to be able to adequately man them. So all those we have done. And so as time goes on, you're going to see different facility increase the enough to be able to accommodate the increase uh, in passenger that we are envisaging. Like I said, We've, we've grown, we are at uh, almost 20 million passengers. Mm. Uh, 18, six, six months ago, we were at 14.5, but we've done 20. But our target actually is to do 40 million. When we say in the next 12 months, we should be able to do 40 the million. The volume dropping, are you saying it in terms of the volume of traffic locally or most of it will that be uh, quite a sizable chunk that are international traffic the volume is combined is both domestic and international what percentage is uh, domestic domestic is is often 55 percent 55 percent so we have a lot more traffic flying through our Nigeria airspace locally yes. and commuting uh, via air yes. than ever before. Yes, we are 160 something million people uh, and from our statistics almost 65% of traveling adults and young adults uh, use air transportation, is a preferred mode of transportation. But some people but still say it is quite expensive compared to other parts of the world. I don't think so. The reason why I don't think so is that air transportation is the most regulated sector in the world. And so it's, it's not policy permissible for an airline to unilaterally decide that, well, my cost of operation is high, therefore I'm going to increase the, the, the cost. You need to have the regulator's approval before that happens. So, uh, and the regulator has to work in conformity with ICAO global standard. So I, I do not think so. Don't forget that in, in parity in price, it's what we have always fought. We fought the British Airways because the prices they were charging domestically was far much in excess to what they were charging in Ghana and neighboring 
countries and so we, we fought them we're, we're still in court with them so price disparity is not acceptable a car doesn't allow it the domestic law doesn't allow it and uh, we will not allow it now when when